Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the newly released MX Linux 21 beta. This is the very first beta release for the 21 version that is going to be based off of Debian 11 Bullseye. And that is one of the cool things about MX Linux is it's not just another Ubuntu based distribution. They completely skip that step and go straight basing off of Debian, so that makes it awesome. So first we're gonna talk about what's new, then we're gonna talk about why for some reason it's ranked number one on DistroWatch, and then we're gonna dive into the system and do just a general overview of what's going on. So first, what is new in this beta release of MX Linux 21? Now other than some basic application additions and updates, a major focus of this beta is actually gonna be on the new UEFI Live Boot menus. So now you could select all your Live Boot options from the boot menus instead of having to use the system console menus. Additionally, when you install it, they've added LVM support in the partition selection area, but at the moment this really only works if a LVM partition already exists. Uh, I'm assuming that they're going to later on add full LVM support so you can make LVM partitions through this. And doing this is a good first step, but that last thing is just me kind of speculating. Now another change in the system is the super user password is going to be required, so your user password is going to be required whenever you do any administrative tasks. And they actually added an option within the MX Linux tweak tool to go ahead and enable or disable this if you see fit but we're gonna look more at the MX tweak tool when we go ahead and do our general overview of the system. And finally, there's a lot of general configuration changes and you're gonna primarily notice this within the actual panels of XFCE, as well as the default panel plugins that they went ahead and decided to use with this release. Now, one thing you may have noticed if you follow MX Linux at all is there was no version 20 and you may be asking yourself, why is that? And the simple answer is they use their major release versions based off of the year that it's released, such as this is 21, this is year 2021. The last version was 2019, that was year 2019. And being that they're going off of these major Debian releases, if Debian doesn't have a major release, neither is MX Linux, and that is why we have that missed version. And that takes us to why is MX Linux so popular? And the easiest answer for that is it's it's not. I mean, it's definitely popular. A lot of people know about it. A lot of people use it. But it's not nearly to the level that something like uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, even maybe Manjaro is at when it comes to actual daily users. The only reason why people believe that this is the most popular Linux distribution is because of those distro watch rankings. And the distro watch rankings really are not that accurate. They go off of hits, so how many people view the specific page about that Linux distribution. And if something's number one and you've never heard of it, of course you're going to click it and check it out. And I believe a lot of that is what drives it up and keeps it at the top. And another reason why we don't get too much accurate data on actual uh, distribution usage when it comes to the overall Linux community is because we don't share that data. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people use Linux is they don't want to share that data with the developers, with any other companies or anything like that. So no matter what we look at, nothing's going to be 100% accurate in the actual use case for Linux distributions. Now there's a couple better sources if you wanted to get a better idea of what Linux distributions actually rank the highest. Uh, one of them is Google Trends, for example. Number one on that is Ubuntu, followed by CentOS, Debian, and so on. And then the next is going to be the uh, Steam rankings, or their uh, hardware and software surveys. And I have that open here. According to them, about, well, just under 20% of people are using Ubuntu with Steam, which isn't surprising at all, followed up by Manjaro Linux at just under 12%. Pure Arch Linux at just above 10%, and that's kind of surprising to me because this is at like 1% usage, 
and that's actually quite a few people just using Arch. Next up is the latest version of Pop OS, and then we have another version of Ubuntu at almost 7%. So that takes the total Ubuntu usage to over a quarter of all Linux users on Steam. So is MX Linux the most popular Linux distribution? No, it is not. But that doesn't mean it isn't a wonderful Linux distribution, and that is what we're going to do right now. We're going to go ahead and jump onto the system, check out some of the new updates that we talked about, as well as just go with a general overview of the system. All right, so now we are booted into the live disk for MX Linux, and some of the things I'm noticing right off the bat compared to last time I used this is one, the taskbar is off to the side. The background is absolutely beautiful, and I do love some of the plugins that they went with with this new beta. Uh, on this welcome screen, we see some easy links so we could get the uh, frequently asked questions, user manuals, wiki, uh, tools, tweaks, and a couple other things. We're gonna be getting into that in just a little bit. What we're going to focus on first is actually the installation process. So we're just going to go ahead and use this welcome screen to click the install MX Linux link. So right here is the installer and you can see that it is an independent Linux distribution based on Debian stable. This is their terms of use, just gives you some info, gives you some general instructions and limitations. Here is where you go ahead and change your keyboard settings. But what we're going to go ahead and do is click on next. Here is the type of installation. You can see right now I am in VirtualBox, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that is selected. Use the entire disk. And right here, we can't really see that LVM thing or the new LVM support at the moment because I don't have any LVM partitions. So for now, we're just gonna to have to go ahead and hit uh, next. But you do have the option to encrypt here if you'd like to as well. For now, I'm not gonna do that. Select yes, and here we have the option for your boot method. Uh, while we're doing this, you can see that they've already began formatting and going through the installation process. So let's install Grub, keep everything at default, hit next, and here we have our computer name. Generally, when I set up a Linux distribution, I like to name my computer after the distribution, just so it says like my name at distribution. So we'll go MX Linux for this and we have the domain, and we're gonna go ahead and keep all this at the default. Go ahead and go next, and here you have some of your locale and time zone settings. I am in the United States. It doesn't have a map or anything like that, but it's, it's fairly easy to figure out. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the Los Angeles time zone. No, I do not live in Los Angeles. We're gonna go with the 24 hour clock, and here you have some service settings advanced. So if you want to go ahead and go in there, you can select various packages that you want to enable or disable, such as cups for printing, certain hardware things you can enable or disable through here, but you can see that everything is selected from default and that's probably what you would want to go with. So now we could go next, next, and here is our user account stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this up. My default login will be Brandon. It's probably gonna ask me to lowercase that, so we'll go just like that. And then fill in your passwords. I just did the uh, same password for both root and default, otherwise I'll probably forget it. Uh, I'm not gonna show the password. I'm not gonna auto log in. And we can go ahead and hit next. And here you'll have some tips for getting help as well as links to their uh, website. Repairing your installation, this is gonna just cycle through. It's going way too quick to actually read, so that's something they might want to change. And when the installation is complete, you will see this screen right here. You have the option to automatically reboot the system. So we're just gonna hit finish, and then it's gonna go ahead and do that system reboot for us. All right, so this is our first boot into MX Linux. It's not too different than what we just saw in our live uh, session. But this time what we're gonna do is spend a little bit more time looking at some of the custom MX tools that they have for us. So first of all, in this little welcome screen, we have tools here. They have other things like we mentioned, uh, popular apps, codecs, things like that. But if you go ahead and click on this link, it opens up your MX tools. And this is awesome because it basically extends or expands your settings option. Especially for somebody who's new to Linux, something like this is absolutely magnificent. So we have the live USB maker, so a USB flasher tool. You could do snapshots through here. You have a ton of system maintenance things such as cleanup, uh, boot options, so for example, if I went to this, one thing, you do see this little pop-up dialog. I'm gonna talk about that more in just a sec once we get into the uh, tweak tool, but authenticate, and then you have your MX boot options here, 
and you can see my kernel parameters. I have it set to uh, 1080p out of the gate. Uh, that's something that you could do, and that's for a virtual box. So just the fact they had that was awesome. And when I booted into it because of their new uh, boot menu options, I was actually able to set this up right out of the gate. You probably saw that as an overlay in the beginning of this video. And of course you have other options such as background, splash screen messages, things like that. So that's just one example of some of the things that you could go ahead and uh, play around with this. Uh, menu editors under setup, you have about Linux. So if you open that up, you get a little bit more information about what you're currently in. So you can see we have the Debian version, the MX version, the support version, desktops. This is running XFCE 4.16 out of the gate. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that. You see that that just opened up that about tab. So we're gonna open our tool thing back up. We have Codex installer, which is nice. That's one of the things you're probably gonna to wanna to do when you first install Linux. Uh, welcome screen, system sound, time and date, conky, just anything you'd expect to be able to go ahead and easily modify is very nicely laid out here for you. Uh, quick system info, format USB, and you have the iDevice mounter. What the iDevice mounter is is another cool tool. I don't really have an iPhone with me to go ahead and demonstrate this, but this is their own MX tool that makes it really easy to mount your uh, iPhone to pull pictures and other things out of it. So that is a very handy tool if you are an iPhone user. But if you go right here, we have the tweak tool. You could access it through here or accessing access it through searching through your menu. But if we go ahead and open that up, you can see our MX tweak tool. So here we have our effects panel. We have it set vertically. So you could go ahead and change this if you'd like to, or you could display it uh, horizontally. So if I applied this, we can throw our bar on the bottom there. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it as the default. So you do have some really easy ways to go ahead and change some of your XFCE settings through here, as well as your themes, your compositors. So you can see we're using the XFCE compositor. You have some quick options for your display settings. I am at currently at 1080p, some config options. And right here, this is a new thing, is the password for administrative tasks. This is a new feature in this beta. Uh, you can set this to user or root. So you saw that password come up when I tried to open up the boot settings. That is one way to enable or disable that. And here you have quick access to certain XFCE settings such as your panel, window manager, and appearance. For example, if I click appearance, you can see I have my style, icons, fonts, and general settings. I haven't really opened up anything, so let's go ahead and pop open HTOP to see what's going on. It looks like we're only using 552 megabytes of system memory out of the gate which re it's pretty good for XFCE, it's actually normal, but compared to a lot of systems, this is very nice. And with that, the CPU usage um, at idle is fairly low. You see it's jumping in between zero and 2%, which again is normal. 107 tasks running in the background. Uh, let's go ahead and just, I could have just hit F10 or something, but let's go ahead and open up a terminal emulator and let's use this to type in NeoFetch. You can see right here, they have some custom uh, bash scripting. So that's nice. So NeoFetch, let's see if it's installed out of the gate, which it is. You can see they didn't try to replace their own thing right here. They're just using Debian because this is just a, uh, ultimately an XFCE front for Debian with a whole bunch of tools added. But this is running XFCE 4.16 with the XFWM4 window manager. Uh, the kernel with this is 5.10, which is what is going to ship with this version of Debian. You can see right here the OS is Deneb <laughs> Denebian. Denebian GNU slash Linux 11. So they're not really hiding the fact that it's Debian at all that a lot of Linux distributions do, or whatever they're forking off of. They're saying this is ultimately Debian. All right, so that is going to conclude our video. I do thank you for watching. Uh, if you couldn't tell, this video was slightly edited down a little bit. I actually recorded this during a live stream, so if you're interested in checking that out, you can go ahead and click the little I above in the corner and watch the full live stream. There's timestamps, so you could go ahead and uh, skip through that if you would like to. Additionally, link down below, I will have the article and the download link so you could try out this beta of MX Linux if you would like to. But now I would like to give a special shout out and thank you to the YouTube members and Patreon supporters. 
Uh, Michael Valentino is a producer, one of the highest tier supporters, so I do thank you very much. All the other supporters you can see on the screen right there. Thank you, everybody. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member, one Patreon link in the description. Uh, YouTube, you could click the little join button right down below there if you're subscribed, or you might not have to be, but that'd be kind of silly. But if you become a Patreon, not a, if you become a YouTube member, you get like emojis and other cool things like that. Uh, anything I post to YouTube members exclusively will get posted over to Patreon. So it just depends on what platform you prefer. Uh, with all that said, make sure you're subscribed and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Like I said, everything linked down below. Um, yeah, have a beautiful day and goodbye.